At the present time, the vast majority of people receiving venetoclax and becoming resistant to venetoclax are people who are already very end stage. It's not surprising that those patients are becoming more resistant. Very little work so far in terms of fully understanding the mechanisms whereby these patients become resistant. It's not so clear that it's due to mutations, for instance, in binding sites, although people are looking at that very, very carefully. Uh, two issues. One is if we select the patients earlier, we decrease that risk. Um, and, and therefore have higher response rates, deeper remissions, less cells that can, that can develop those sorts of mutations. But what we're also telling us is that even with the agents that we have available, if we start thinking about using ibrutinib, venetoclax and abinutuzumab together in combination, for the subgroup of patients that relapse, you need new and additional agents. And fortunately at this meeting, we're seeing lots of those new agents already beginning to appear. Well, the, the PI3 kind, the umbrilisumab, the TG1202 compound, looks like a PI3 kinase delta inhibitor that's very different in its toxicity profile to the other two agents which are already out there in, in, in um, both approved and in clinical development. So there's one agent that looks, uh, that looks new. Um, of course, um, not for patients to become brutinib resistant, for those who are intolerant, a calibrate, there's a lot of work on a calibrutinib here. And of course, there's lots of other, um, you know, things like bi-specific antibodies in which looking at very different types of approaches that, that kind of merit further, further looks in this whole field.